what's up guys welcome to another video on salesforce gold guys this video is going to be related to api connectivity so you must have seen that api connectivity over google whenever you are typing a sentence or something and google will come up with result like did you mean that so in that case let's say if you have made a mistake in your sentence or in your line then google can provide you some suggestion like did you mean this did you mean that right so in today's video we'll try to create similar kind of api functionality where I'll be creating a custom lightning web component where I'll be having an input box and in that input box we'll try to type some uh, misspelled lines and using this API we will try to get the correct data as a suggestion from the API result. So the API is basically did you mean this API? This is basically kind of a replica of what Google is doing, right? So in this video I'll show you how you can connect this API, how you can connected using named credential and external credentials as well. So let's start today's video guys. I'm Kapil, your host, and you're watching Salesforce Gold. All right, guys, let's start today's video. So while I was searching for this API, guys, I found it over this API layers.com. And uh, this is the API, did you mean this? And it says Google's famed, did you mean this feature, uh, which you will be able to find on Google basically whenever you will be typing a sentence and if you have misspelled it or uh, it must be, a, it might be a typo as well. So in that case, Google will give you some result, right? And uh, you will be able to, you know, choose uh, the correct sentence from the result as well. So the same way we'll be using this API, okay? So for that, we need to first store this API key. This is my API key and uh, I have created a free account over this to get the key. So first I will go here to get the URL and other stuff from this link. Okay. And I think this is available here as well. Yeah, here it is. All right. So guys, first of all, you need to create a named credential to store these uh, API key in your Salesforce org so that it can be used as part of REST API. So for that, you can simply go to named credentials and we'll create external credential for it first. So let's name it. Did you mean this credential? Okay, as an authentication protocol, I'll select custom. I'll save it. Okay, it is saved. Now we have to set a principle for this. So let's say I'm creating it for admin user as of now. And you can add our authentication parameter, guys. So authentication parameter, we'll be adding API key here. Okay. Now if I will go here and click here, so this is my API key. I'll quickly copy it from here and paste it here. Okay, this is saved. Now we'll use custom headers here so that we don't have to use it uh, on the name credential. So my custom header name is API key. And in value guys, we need to use the value that we created in the principal column. So for that, we'll use a formula here. So to start the formula, you can have have curly braces and exclamation mark and then dollar sign and then you can call credential dot now the name of the external credential so in my case it is did you mean this right right and the key name is same api key did you mean this thread? Oh, yeah, the same. So we have created an external credential here. Now we'll go to name credential again. And I will create a name credential here. So I'll name it. Did you mean this API? Okay. In URL, we'll pass this URL till this API. I'll copy it from here, paste it here, I'll remove this question mark sign. External credential, we'll select our credential, which is did you mean this uh, credential, okay. 
and uh, client certification we don't need any client certification we don't have to generate the authorization header that will be generated in the external credential and uh, you need to make sure you are checking this checkbox which is allow formulas in http header because we are having a formula in the header to have the api key and let's have the default settings let's save it so the name credential is also ready okay now we are good to use this name credential uh, as part of our code so first i will go to apex i have already created empty component here it is did you mean this api and apex as well so this is my apex class so in apex guys recently i did one of uh, the api integration using weather api so we'll be using the same apex here okay so this is my weather api code snipped i'm just quickly copying the apex from here to here and uh, let's make it text okay i'll move this and my name credential uh, was did you mean this api right the same request is going to be get request so apex is ready also let me change the weather so get result okay so apex is ready and on the component side i'll just create a text box which will be having a value and on the click of submit button we will just pass the value to this api and try to get the correct value so for that i believe we are good to use this the similar format so i'll just quickly copy it from here and paste it in my component let's save some time here so i'll make it did you mean this api source instead of source city i will do search here get weather i will modify it to submit only we don't need any image here i'll remove this thing okay what other modifications are needed okay i think that's fine and also let's add a value here so i have added my text here and now here also i will add my text okay it is not having any value in the my text okay so let me copy other functions also so this is my weather api i need handle on change and button click so i'll just copy it from here and i will have it here so using this handle on change basically we'll be having the text typed in the text box to this function and we'll assign it to this text which is my text okay and we need to import the apex method here so for that I will add import okay here it is now I have added get result here in this so I'll save it quickly I'll replace the function name get result and there we were having I believe text let's confirm one here yeah, string name is text so here the parameter name will do text and we'll pass my text awesome response yes we need response to check and uh, let's remove these additional parameters let's remove this additional parameter from error okay so we have created a basic structure where it will be just showing us the response uh, based on the past value right okay let's save it okay now let me deploy this first and this also looks fine so let me deploy this as well okay i'll open my google chrome i'll go to my application again hit refresh and here you can see the component itself now let me open the inspect element quickly We'll go in console, clear it. Now let's say if I'm typing uh, 
uh, hell are you doing so i'm having one typo here so if i'll submit it it will hit the request to that api and try to return a suggestion based on the past parameter okay so here it says illegal character in uh, open queue part okay okay so i believe this is due to we because we are not having permission to that external credential so guys whenever you are using external credential make sure your profile or permission set is having a specific permission okay so i'll refresh it quickly i will go to my profile okay user details now from here this is system administration my profile and you need to go to enable external credential principle access okay now you need to edit it and i will add my credential principle here okay so this is uh, one of the benefit of using these external credential like you can have separate permission set or profile access with this you don't have to provide access to the name credential you just provide access to the uh, to its principle to its credential only now let me go back to my component i'll refresh it quickly let's try to type same text here again still i'm getting an error let's try to see the apex ones so call out is fine did you mean this api the name is also fine okay let's try to pass a single word first So it says credential did you mean this cred api key does not exist the error message is okay we need to check the api key first so let's go back to the main credential okay external credential and did you mean this let me try to add it api key okay did you mean this Okay, I think here it should be credential only. I believe that was the issue. Mm, let me try to run it again. Okay, we are getting the result. So when we have typed hell, it is returning us result as well. Because as, I mean, it is just a suggestion. So, yeah. So for example, if I'll type hello, if I'll try to type hello, uh it is again throwing an error illegal character let me refresh it once okay so you can see the result as fellow i have typed h-e-l-l-o-w and it has returned a result called fellow so that's how this API is going to work. If I'll type the complete sentence, I have added a 
spell mistake here. So if I will submit this, okay, I don't know why it is throwing the same error again. It says illegal characters, okay. Let me try to pass one character only. Okay, read timeout. Let me refresh it. Now it should return the fellow result again, I believe. Yeah, you can see fellow. If I type hell, it will return hell. But when we are typing more than one uh, words, it is throwing an error. Uh, I think this is because while these parameters are going to the URL, it is having white spaces in between. So to avoid white spaces, what we can do is we can go to the component. Okay, here it is. And before passing it here, we can do encode URA component. And so this encode URA component will basically make your string or make your components URL friendly. So instead of white spaces, it will be adding, oh, let me trim it. So instead of white spaces, it will add a percentage sign and 20. So in URL, basically percent sign and 20 means white space, okay? So I think that was the issue with this, okay? We have deployed it. Now let's go back and try to Type a whole sentence. Okay. Now I'll submit it. Okay, you can see the result is hello, how are you? And the original text was hello, how, then typo you. So that's how this API works, guys. Now let me try to make this UI a little better, I would say. So let's try one thing so when you're getting the result so if the result is having some suggestions so let's show you let's show user a confirm box whether user wants to change that text or whether user wants to keep it the same way okay so for that guys what you can do is you can simply uh, go to this blog and search for confirm box so we'll search for confirm and you will be getting lightning confirm box here it is so we'll copy this confirm box from here and add it here and we need to copy that function as well handle confirm async here it is okay where's vs code and i will paste it here after this function Okay, now we are having confirm box here. So let's try to use it in the UI. So confirm box, uh, what it will do basically, whatever action you need to perform after buttons click, that will be, uh, that will be after this confirmation box. So if user will select OK, only in that case, that action will be performed. Otherwise, that action will be deprecated. So here, when we are getting the result here, so let's get the message also. So usually the message what we are getting here is result, we are getting Excel result, we are getting is modified, which is true or false. And uh, we are getting the original text, the original text we don't need, we, we know already what it is. Or you can use original text as well if it is different from the return text. So that could be another way of uh, checking if you are getting a result or not okay otherwise what you can do is you are already having past data you can have message past data dot result which will be having the new message basically and i will add a condition here if 
parse data dot is modified equals to true if it is true then we will call this handle confirm and let's pass this message okay now in this handle confirm so this is the message first let's accept the message here okay now theme let's make it maybe info instead of message we'll have our text and label we can check uh, did you mean this okay add a question mark so now whenever we'll be getting a different result what it will do basically it will just check the result based on the return value and if in the return value we are having data is modified that means we are getting a suggestion from the api okay and in that case we'll capture it and uh, we'll display a confirm box now let's do one more thing so basically this confirm box result will be true and false based on the selected option so if it is true so if the result is true then let's do this dot my text equals to message the new text else let it be as it is okay let's deploy it and test out this functionality okay it is deployed let's go to browser refresh the page we don't need the console log now so let's try to have the same text here again so i will do how are you doing i'm having a typo there a misspelling and now if i will submit it it should open the confirm box okay we are not having that confirm box here Uh, something is uh, wrong I believe in the confirm box maybe okay no it was the read timeout error we need to refresh it let's give it another try okay you can see confirm box here it is an info confirm box did you mean this hello how are you if you will click on ok it will replace the text in your text box if you will click cancel the text will remain same and uh, if you are having the correct text which don't need any replacement or don't need any suggestion so now if i will click on submit again so in the console you will notice the is modify result is false because it's the same text basically and uh, it is not having any new result right but if you will try anything else for example let's say hello how are you doing so it might be changing it to fellow i believe so you see the result as a suggestion fellow how are you doing and if i'll click on ok it will replace the text so guys that's how you can use this uh, did you mean this api and uh, that's how you can implement it using a custom lightning web component and uh, so that it is for today guys i'll be having the complete code snipped on the blog which is salesforceboard.com so if you need the complete code you can directly go to my blog and get it from there if you like today's video guys a subscribe to the channel will be awesome i'll see you in the next one guys thanks for watching